Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us on the webinar today. Today we're going to talk about addressing eczema from the inside out. And before we get started, I want to make a note that the information in this webinar is not meant to cure, prevent, or treat any diseases or replace legal advice. If you have any questions about your own personal health, it is best to speak to your healthcare practitioner as they will have the best overall scope of your body and your ailments. And before we get started, I want to take just a moment to introduce myself. My name is Paige. I am the founder of Make Your Health a Priority, and I hold a Master's of Human Nutrition from the University of Bridgeport, which makes me a CCN and CNS candidate. I use functional and clini clinical nutrition practices to help my clients heal from ailments including anxiety and depression, skin disorders, chronic and autoimmune diseases. I would really love to connect with you after this webinar, so you can reach out to me through my website, which is makeyourhealthapriority.com. You can also find me on Instagram at makeyourhealthapriority, or if you have any questions about my services or the content of this webinar, you can also email me using info at makeyourhealthapriority. And if you do choose to follow me on social media, you'll find that I post all kinds of information ranging from the inspirational to explaining the different functions and medicinality of foods. I love sharing fitness tips on how to make it actually fun, as well as some lifestyle practices that can really impact your health and different forms of meditation and breathing exercises that you didn't even know you wanted. So in this webinar, we're going to cover a lot of information. I'm going to start with exactly what dermatitis is, the signs and symptoms. We'll talk about what causes it, the allopathic treatment, lab tests that I suggest for this condition, and then we'll move through the eight elements of healing that I use with my clients to see how exactly the elements relate to dermatitis. And we'll finish off with your very well-earned simple sugars discount. So dermatitis is the general term for any type of inflammation of the skin. And there are several types, as you can see on the screen here, including atopic, irritant contact, allergic contact, and rosacea. Eczema specifically refers to atopic dermatitis, which will be the focus today. However, if you are experiencing any of these conditions or other skin issues like acne or premature aging, many, if not all, of the principles I'll talk about today can absolutely apply. Symptoms can include inflammation of the skin, scaling, flaking, thickening, weeping, crusting, color changes, and itching. So what exactly causes dermatitis? The way that I approach healing with my clients, regardless if that is depression, anxiety, cancer, or other chronic disease, autoimmune diseases, acne, or dermatitis, is recognizing that many conditions are symptoms and not a diagnosis. I've never been satisfied with the approach of just addressing symptoms without really getting to the root of the conditions. So think about it this way. If you're having a symptom like itchy and scaly skin, your body is trying to tell you something is not quite right. If we ignore it or just address, address the symptom like itchy skin, whatever is actually going on is left unaddressed and can cause bigger problems down the line. Just the other day, I heard a really great quote around this concept saying, if you listen to your body when it whispers, you won't have to hear it scream. And that really resonated with me and a lot of the feedback that I get from clients. A really great example here is if we are low in B vitamins. So this could start off as low energy or trouble concentrating. For some people, a very slight dip in B vitamins can cause depression or anxiety. Now, if left untreated, this can lead to very serious complications like the inability to detox properly 
which can even lead to tumors and chronic disease and serious neurological disorders. So if we just caffeinate ourselves or take antidepressants without testing for an underlying cause, we're masking the symptoms and setting ourselves up for something much worse down the line. Dermatitis is the same. There are actually several reasons why this can show up in our body, and it may be different for each person. So science tells us there are many underlying causes, including low levels of hydroconic acid in the stomach, leaky gut, candida, food sensitivities, stress, weakened enzymes in the body, and even many different kinds of allergies or sensitivities. Stress, especially chronic tension, can cause or exacerbate this condition. And some schools of thought also include overexposure to elements like copper and mercury, mercury as well as other toxic exposure like pesticides, herbicides, solvents, petroleum products, antibiotics, and other pharmaceuticals. What happens is they actually build up over time in the liver, and if the liver becomes overwhelmed, it can't detox properly, especially if we have vitamin or mineral deficiencies. For more information specifically on those heavy metals, go ahead and check out my post on Instagram about mercury fillings. Now, you may be thinking, but dermatitis runs in my family, which is one of my favorite topics to discuss when it comes to our health, because we've been conditioned to pass off many ailments as genetics and just accept them. However, this is just not true. Outside of a few conditions that we might be born with or other genetic mutations, heredity is really just a scapegoat. If many people in your family have diabetes, obesity, acne, depression, and even dermatitis, this is not because you were born with a destiny to have it. This means that chances are your family has the same toxic exposures, dietary habits, stressors, and gut conditions. Even if eczema showed up for you in infancy, this can be from deficiencies or toxic buildups your parents or even their parents and beyond had and was passed down to you through DNA. However, uh, if it is something like toxic buildup or disruption in the gut, you can still balance that out for yourself and this is not the same thing as it actually being genetic. So let's take a look at the allopathic methods for addressing dermatitis. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term, allopathic refers to the treatment of disease by conventional means, i.e. using drugs with the opposite effects to the symptoms. Now, most prescriptions are go going to fall into the three categories that you see on the screen here. So corticosteroids, calciurin inhibitors, and antihistamines. Now, before we dive in any further, let me go ahead and say this. If you choose an allopathic route, if you are using these medications right now, or if you have in the past, this section is not meant to embarrass, scare, or put down anyone. We are all on our own journey, and the intention in this section is to share information, to make sure you have all of the tools that you need to make your own decisions for what is right for you. And chances are you were really only given these options by a trusted medical professional who is really trying to do the best for you within their wheelhouse. And my intention here is to open up the gate for other approaches and encourage everyone to look at their pathways and nutrient deficiencies a little bit deeper. Secondly, if you are on these medications right now, it is very important that you do not just suddenly stop, especially while you're taking steroids, your body will produce 
a different amount of natural steroids. So if you do suddenly stop taking your prescription, your body will not have enough steroids to work properly. And it is likely that you will have symptoms like the ones that you see on the screen here. So please let me repeat, do not stop taking your medication suddenly and don't let this information scare you. Let it inform, guide, and even empower you to choose for yourself going forward after solid consideration and speaking with a trusted, informed medical professional. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the side effects for corticosteroids. And normally, I would never put this much text on a screen. However, for the next few slides, I really just want you to see the amount of different side effects that these medications do open you up to. So go ahead and take a quick look here. And again, these are specifically for the corticosteroids. And you'll notice a couple of really disturbing issues here, like osteoporosis, hypertension, diabetes, weight gain, cataracts and glaucoma, and even mood changes like feeling irritable or anxious. Now, I do want to discuss prednisone specifically for a moment because there are uh, a lot of pieces of information about this drug, and it is one of the most commonly used. The first fact to note is that it depletes nutrients by speeding up your metabolic rate. So if you remember our chat about nutrient deficiencies just a moment ago, like the example of B vitamins, over the long term, this can have very serious consequences. Prednisone and other common steroids used for dermatitis deplete the body of calcium, magnesium, folic acid, potassium, selenium, vitamin C, vitamin D, and melatonin. Let that sink in for a moment. They also have many drug interactions, including uh, drugs like estrogens, diuretics, warfarin, alcohol, and even diabetes drugs. And if used in the first trimester of pregnancy, it can actually cause cleft palate. This medication is also secreted in breast milk and can cause side effects in infants who are nursing. And there are some conditions in which prednisone can make far worse. It is also associated with the new onset and manifestations of latent diabetes and worsening of diabetes. Now, this next part worries me just immensely. So prednisone causes immune suppression, therefore increasing the frequency and severity of infection and decreases the effectiveness of vaccines and antibiotics. We also learned that these medications cause nutrient deficiencies like vitamin D and calcium, which are two key nutrients in bone health. So it's really no surprise that prednisone may cause osteoporosis that results in bone fractures. And those on these medications long-term must get regular bone scans. So please ask yourself, you know, is this something that your doctor is offering to you if you have been on this medication for a long period of time and a long period of time in this case, meaning over three months. Another large concern here is adrenal insufficiency and weaning off of prednisone. So prolonged use of this drug and other corticosteroids causes the adrenal glands to atrophy and stop producing the body's natural cortisol. So cortisol is an issue because it's a hormone that is vital to our circadian rhythm. It gives us energy in the morning and without it, our sleep cycles will not be functioning properly. And the last major issue I want to discuss here is necrosis of hips and joints. A serious complication of long-term use of corticosteroids is a septic necrosis of the hip joints. And this is a condition in which there is actual death and degeneration of the hip bone. It is a very painful condition that ultimately can lead to the need for surgical replacement of a hip. This drug also causes psych psychiatric disturbances that you can see on the screen here. And you can even go from feeling happy one moment to feeling very, very depressed the next moment. Now, moving on to the calcerin inhibitors. 
They impact your immune system and they can lead to hypertension, tremor, and all of the symptoms you can see on the screen here. They suppress the immune system by preventing interleukin-2 production in T cells. And we've already discussed the concerns for a suppressed immune system. Again, this increases frequency or severity of infection and decreases the effectiveness of vaccines and antibiotics. Moving on to antihistamines, and this can include, but certainly isn't limited to items like Zyrtec, Allegra, and Benadryl, and they have side effects that, again, you can see here on the screen. They also cause nutrient depletions of melatonin, which is another important ho hormone in our circadian rhythm, and it actually acts as an antioxidant specifically helpful for anti-aging. The depletion of melatonin can lead to insomnia, depression, growth hormone deficiency, blood sugar changes, decreased uh, protection against cancer, and premature aging. And let me just note here that it is not advised to take melatonin unless you know that you are deficient, as it is a hormone. I know that it's sold over the counter, but again, you really don't want to supplement with melatonin unless you know that you are deficient. Now, the problem with these allopathic treatments, outside of all of the side effects that we just learned about, is that they don't actually address any of the underlying causes that we discussed earlier. So if anything on the right side is causing your dermatitis, nothing on the left side is going to actually help you in the long run. It absolutely may give you tempor temporary relief. However, we know that these options can't be used long term and they aren't addressing the root of the issue. Now, if you've taken any of these medications, or if you just want a deeper look inside of your pathways to find out what may be the root of your dermatitis experience, here are some of the tests that I would recommend. The first one is my absolute favorite, which is called a Nutri-Eval, and this actually looks at all of your vitamins and minerals from a cellular level. So again, going back to those B vitamins, it's going to tell you from a cellular level what you actually need. The next test I would recommend is a food sensitivity because food sensitivities are one of the largest causes of dermatitis and getting this test will let you know what foods that you should avoid. The best part about this is that food sensitivities can actually go away. So about two years ago, I tested sensitive for coconut, sesame, and soy. So I stopped eating those foods for a couple of months and I got retested and then I was totally fine and I could consume them again. I would also do an adrenal stress test and a stool test and this last one, for the Delta-6 is, you know, the least likely. So if everything else came back fine, you might want to consider this one. But those first four, I would absolutely do. And in fact, I actually run them on most people that come through my office simply because they give us so much information about what's going on inside your body. So let me reiterate that this information is meant to empower you. Living in modern times, chances are most, if not all of us, have taken prescription drugs. I absolutely have. I was a very unwell child who had several rounds of antibiotics and steroids, which led to severe depression, anxiety, acne, hormone imbalances, sleep disturbances, memory issues, fatigue, and if you believe it, even more from there. And I was given Xanax and birth control, which made everything much, much worse. So here is what you can do to take control of your health. Going forward, we'll review some of the steps that you can take to truly be your own health advocate. Reduce your chances of chronic disease in the future and possibly even eliminate your eczema symptoms and hopefully help you lead a medication-free life. So with each client, I make sure all of these eight elements are in balance and it has always brought fantastic results. 
So we're going to start with nutrition and functional medicine. So during my Masters of Nutrition course, we had a huge focus on functional medicine and biochemistry, and I chose my program specifically because of this. So functional medicine, if you're not familiar, looks at the entire person, not just their symptoms. So it takes into account what you're feeling, diet, lifestyle, sleep habits, activity level, biochemical pathways, childhood trauma, PTSD, genetics, and more. It truly is the most comprehensive approach to healing the entire being as opposed to just addressing symptoms. It marries scientific data like the lab test we discussed a couple slides ago and an effective natural approach using adjustments to diet, lifestyle, supplements that we know you need, as we like to say, testing and not guessing, as well as foods, herbs, and more. And what I love about it is that it, this is not a one-size-fits-all approach. You, you aren't just going to be handed a meal plan and a list of supplements and sent on your way. We know that that one-size-fits-all approach is ineffective because we are all fabulous, unique beings. And as we learned, there are dozens of causes of an ailment like dermatitis. So instead of prescribing everybody the same few pills, it gives you exactly what your body, mind, and when you work with me, your soul truly needs in order to function and heal. Now, this is an approach that I um, will take a look at as you and if this approach will take a look at you as an individual instead as a statistic. And let's be honest, what could be better than that? So here are some supplements that may help you. And let me be really clear, it is always better to test and not guess. So these supplements will help you depending on what is the root of your ailment. So it's definitely my suggestion to get some lab work done first, just so that you're not flushing money down the toilet, trying to see what sticks to the wall, and let's be honest, becoming more discouraged that another method didn't solve the concerns. If I'm being truly honest, y'all, I spent tens of thousands of dollars on my skin issues and depression before I learned about functional medicine. And it truly is my goal to make sure that others don't forfeit their hard earned money uh, without testing to back up the need for supplements. Now that said, there are plenty of really great foods that everybody can enjoy starting today. Of course, if you have an allergy or a sensitivity, you will want to avoid some of the foods we're going to talk about today, but this is again where functional foods really come into play. And so these particular categories are excellent for the skin, specifically for dermatitis. And I'll leave it up for a second in case anybody wants to grab a screenshot. So we have omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin A foods, vitamin E foods. And then on this screen, we have some of my personal favorites with zinc. I could eat pumpkin seeds all day long, you know, lentils, peas, collard greens. Now with some of these, like, you know, corn or soy foods, they must always, always, always be organic and non-GMO. And they are the foods that tend to have the most allergies and sensitivities. So it may be worthwhile to leave them out if you are dealing with some kind of ailment, um, but if you know that you're not sensitive or allergic, again, just always make sure they are organic and non-GMO. And some of my favorites are, are closer to the bottom, like those blue-green microalgaes like spirulina and chlorella, absolutely fantastic foods that you can incorporate and herbs on the bottom here, dandelion and burdock especially, are two of my all-time favorites. I keep some dandelion tea on hand pretty much at all times. There's a great company called Ticino that makes a coffee, coffee alternative, and it uses dandelion in some of their products. And I literally have some burdock on my counter right now, ready to be juiced. 
So let's go ahead and talk about a few foods to avoid because just as important as bringing in functional foods, we need to remove the foods that are not serving us. And I need to make a special mention for dairy here. Let me be very clear that biochemically, there is absolutely no reason why an adult human should consume dairy milk at all. Why would any adult need to drink breast milk? Think about that for a second. All milk is breast milk, right? And why would we consume the milk of another species? We are not baby cows. Plus, the nutrient ratios, specifically the calcium to protein, are designed to make that baby cow grow to be from about 90 pounds to 300 to 600 pounds within six months to a year. And that is absolutely not what our bodies need to do. And believe it or not, Cow's milk actually leaches calcium from our bones because it is so acidic to the human body and calcium neutralizes acidity. So in order to keep our blood pH stable, the calcium is used for balancing instead of our pathways and structures where it really needs to be. On top of that, it's mucus forming, it weakens our immune system, and it actually causes allergies to other things like different foods, pollen, and plants. Now, it is important to note that most humans stop making lactase, which is the digestive enzyme that breaks down dairy after the ages of two to five. And in our culture, we treat people who are lactose intolerant like there is something wrong with them, when in fact, it is a gene mutation that allows people to digest dairy after infancy. And this actually comes from a famine in Europe a very long time ago, which is why more Caucasians have a gene mutation that allows them to digest dairy, while others of African, Latin, and Asian descent have higher rates of lactose intolerance. And think about it this way. We need cow's milk as much as we need milk from a dog, a rat, or a giraffe. Essentially, not at all. <laughs> and moving on to some uh, topical options, I absolutely love good quality, therapeutic grade essential oils. I use them in my practice and at home all the time as they have been used for thousands of years by many healing modalities. And now my nerdy side is becoming satisfied because there are so many clinical studies emerging about the effectiveness of essential oils. I've also started making my own cleaning products and some skincare products. And soon I'm actually going to post a blog about my DIY sunburn spray as it becomes uh, summertime in this hemisphere. And the sunburn spray really truly works. It's non-toxic, eco-friendly, and extremely cost-effective. So you can make your own skincare products or you can use essential oils as a booster to add to your already existing favorite brands. So what does science tell us about essential oils and dermatitis? actually a lot. So I was really excited to find the clinical study that you see cited on the screen here that breaks down essential oils for various skin conditions. And as someone who has struggled with skin health most of their adolescent and adult life, this was truly a great find for me. And I found that some of my all-time favorites are actually excellent for eczema. So on the screen are some of my favorite oils that this clinical study tells us improve eczema. And I bolded my absolute top favorites because I know there are so many to choose from and I actually cut this list already. Um, but I wanted to make sure you had lots of options just in case, you know, some of these smells just don't appeal to you. And I want to be really, really clear here that quality matters. And there is one brand that I use personally as it is therapeutic grade, uses organic practices, is non-GMO, gives back to communities, and it allows me to purchase at wholesale prices. Even if 
a product is organic, an essential oil is organic. If it's in a big box store or a grocery store, even if it's a very expensive grocery store, chances are it's really not going to be top quality. So one of the resources that you'll get in a follow-up email after this event is how to buy great quality therapeutic essential oils at wholesale prices. Or if you're interested, you can reach out to me for retail price products. I'm more than happy to ship them out to you from my account. And you can email me again at info at makeyourhealthapriority.com or you can send me a direct message on Instagram and we can nerd out about essential oils and talk about how to get you some of the best quality products. And the oils that you see here are also a great addition to products like Simple Sugar Skin Care for an extra boost. And that is a brand that we're going to talk about towards the end of the presentation. So for some people, correcting hydration issues can be, and I truly don't say this lightly, life-changing and even life-saving. So if you're interested in the power of hydration and you like to read, there's a fantastic book and it's a super easy read that was actually required in my master's program called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. And it is remarkable how dehydration can impact our health and quality of life. I'm pretty sure we all remember that day in grade school where we learned how the body is made up of 60% of water. And according to H.H. Mitchell, Journal of Biological Chemistry, the brain and heart are composed of 73% water. The lungs are about 83%. Skin contains 64% water. Muscles and kidneys are 79%, and even our bones are a bit watery at 31%. So I talk about hydration extensively in all of my sport nutrition talks. And FYI, I have a sport nutrition webinar coming up in June. So again, follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my email list if you want to hear about the registration announcement. And get this. As little as a 2% dehydration can negatively impact athletic performance. I'm going to say that again because it's so wild. As little as 2% dehydration can negatively impact athletic performance. And as I'm sure many of you are realizing just now, an even lesser amount of dehydration can impact our health and well-being. And since most of us are chronically dehydrated, our bodies may be really struggling. And staying hydrated is one of the best steps that you can take for improving your dermatitis. So let's discuss how hydration impacts our skin. So Cutaneous water content is known to play an important role in different skin functions, such as a water barrier function or an envelope function, and water deficiency or dehydration is associated with several dermatological dysfunctions. Water is the main component of cells and tissues. It's a major element of body fluid compartments. It's essential, an essential nutrient with unique properties as a solvent for iconic, uh, ionic compounds and solutes. And it acts as a carrier with a central role in cell homeostasis. So in short, it's really, really good for keeping our cells healthy. Water is the environment in which all transport system works within our body. So things like digestion and absorption and creating and using hormones properly. It helps maintaining body volume. It plays an important role in thermoregulation, which AKA keeping your body at a very comfortable temperature. And it acts as a lubricant and a shock absorbent. So I'm sure some of you are probably running to the kitchen right now to get a glass of water. And to be honest, I just truly don't blame you. Um, I'm literally sipping on water as I'm doing this presentation now. And of course, there is science directly relating hydration to dermatitis. So according to the University of Sheffield, patients with eczema are much more sensitive to the effects of hard water than other people with healthy skin. 
And that is something to consider as it may be a trigger for you. And I found another report by a physician that tells us that fluoride weakens the immune system. And I really need to repeat that because I know so many of us grew up with a different mindset, but fluoride weakens the immune system and it actually causes skin eruptions like eczema, as well as gastric distress, headache, and overall weakness. And y'all, I really cannot stress this enough to get fluoride out of your intake. If it's in your toothpaste, toss it out today and use baking soda instead or a natural toothpaste. And I also highly encourage you to look for a water filter that removes fluoride. So I have a Berkey water filter as it accomplishes this uh, and more because it removes cysts, bacteria, viruses, pharmaceuticals, and literally dozens of other items that can be found in our water supply. And although I do want to stay on topic, I absolutely cannot discuss fluoride without noting that it calcifies your pineal gland in the brain. So it literally dulls our personalities and our ability to think. So please consider getting a water filter that will remove fluoride from your water at home. And when it comes to skin and hydration, topical support may be very helpful. Uh, as mentioned, you'll get a discount code at the end of the webinar for my all-time favorite hydrating skincare brand. And I'll tell you a little bit more about them really soon. However, it is very well documented that topical moisturizer can be very helpful in alleviating symptoms from dermatitis. So this year, I have been on a sleep altering mission with myself and with my clients. So there is an excellent book called Sleep Smarter by clinical nutritionist Sean Stevenson. And this book truly is the holy grail of improving your sleep and therefore your health. Now, over 60% of people in the U.S. have sleep disturbances, according, um, and according to research, there is a high prevalence of sleep disturbances experienced by adults with eczema. In fact, the likelihood of sleep disturbances is much higher in patients with eczema compared to those without it. And poor sleep quality appears to, get this, worsen eczema severity. So that's a loop, y'all. You know, you're getting less quality sleep because of the eczema, which then in turn makes the eczema even worse. And I want to point out, it is not just adults suffering in the sleep department. I'm sure there are several parents on this webinar that are attending because their child has eczema and children with atopic dermatitis experience significant sleep disruption, uh, and clinically, the disease is noted to worsen our circadian rhythm at night. So their circadian rhythm is essential to properly balanced hormones, good digestion, and just overall well-being. I work very closely with my clients to improve their sleep habits and therefore their circadian rhythm. It's, it's really interesting. I don't think I've had anybody specifically come to me for sleep disturbances yet, but I always ask about it in the initial consult. And I have yet to have a client that has any ailment and good sleep uh, practices or good quality sleep. So it's literally one of the very first things that we address uh, because as you can see on the screen here, there are some really great great benefits to being asleep by certain hours. And this is just um, a list of tips of my favorite ways to foster good sleep. So the first two are just bits of knowledge. So knowing that the most regenerating hours for your body, for your cells are between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. The most detoxifying hours for your detox organs are 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. And that doesn't mean that you should only sleep between those hours. It means that being asleep by those hours can greatly help your body regenerate. 
Also having a meditation practice is one of the best things you can do to increase your sleep quality. Also having your bedroom so dark that you literally can't see the hand in front of your face. And sleep masks are really helpful here. However, what's really interesting is that our skin actually has receptors that are very similar to the retina in the eye. So our bodies, even when we're asleep, can know that the sun is coming up and then it's time to wake up soon before the sun ever hits our eyeballs. So if you ever go camping or if you're one of those people that wake up as soon as the sun is up, that's exactly why. You're also going to want to turn off all of your screens by 8 or 8.30, and I wish I had an entire hour to talk about just this. Maybe that would be another great webinar, um, but let's just say that outside of just the blue screens, being on screens, especially scrolling on Instagram or on YouTube, can really impact our sleep uh, because it gives us little hits of dopamine, which is going to make us more awake. And then also getting outside during the day is one of the best things that you can do for your sleep. Again, getting the sun on your skin is not just good for vitamin D, but also it helps your eyes um, adjust and also signals to your brain what hormones that you should be secreting because it's daytime. Now, I like to use the term movement instead of exercise because I find it quite honestly, just to be a bit more appealing. So if your idea of fun fitness is going to the gym or a group class, honestly, power to you. However, if that does not sound like you, you are absolutely not alone. And there are so many unbelievably fun, creative, unique ways to move your body. So how does this help with dermatitis? Remember that stress and inflammation can cause or exacerbate symptoms. And according to research, yoga has an impact on the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal cortisol axis and can play an important role in helping patients with depression and post-traumatic stress disorder, i.e. it can help you reduce stress and inflammation. Now, according to one of my all-time favorite healing practices, Ayurveda, certain yoga postures such as twisting, binding, and even certain backbending positions are suggested to help detox the body. I personally recently started a kundalini yoga practice that has a bit heavier focus on meditation and breath work than most yoga practices. In fact, most of the sessions I've done so far have been completely sitting down. And it is honestly one of the absolute best steps that I've taken for both my health and for my skin, which leads me into the next element. So I used to be a person that held their breath all of the time. And to be honest, I didn't even realize I was doing this until I brought man uh, mindfulness to my breathing. And you guessed it, I have a study to back this up too. So diaphragmatic breathing may trigger body relaxation responses and benefit both physical and mental health. So this study provided evidence demonstrating the effects of diaphragmatic breathing, which is a mind-body practice on mental function, and from a health psychological approach, which has important uh, implications for health promotion. Now, the study states that evidence has indicated that even a single a single breathing practice significantly reduces blood pressure, increases heart rate variability, which is not the same as just straight up increasing your heart rate, and oxygenation enhances pulmonary function and improves cardiorespiratory fitness and respiratory muscle strength. And breathing practice, again, also known as that diaphragmatic breathing or just deep breathing, uh, is defined as an efficient, integrative body-mind training for dealing with stress and psychosomatic conditions. This diaphragmatic breathing involves contraction of the diaphragm, 
expansion of the belly and deepening of the inhalation and exhalation, which uh, consequently decreases respiration frequency and maximizes the amount of blood gases in our body. So these practices are also said to help eliminate toxins from the body, toxins that may be playing a role in your skin conditions. And there are several studies on the impact of med uh, meditation or breath work and stress in that they help lower cortisol, which we've mentioned a few times today. Now, cortisol is a hormone that has been demonized as the stress hormone. Um, however, again, it's very important for our circadian rhythm. And just like anything else, we need to make sure that it is in balance. Otherwise, it could have some um, impact on our health. And again, when cortisol is chronically too high, there really are some major health implications here, like stress and mood disorders, depression, anxiety, acne, and get this, high, uh, high cortisol can actually make you insulin resistant. I want to say that again because I was just in Ohio uh, very recently taking care of a client who is experiencing depression and anxiety. And even though she eats, you know, no added sugar whatsoever, she's also becoming insulin resistant. And I'm, I'm fairly certain this is due to high cortisol. So just be aware of that. So it's really important to keep our hormones in check, and meditation is one of the cheapest and honestly free ways to accomplish this. So we already talked about how getting outside during the day, especially in the morning, can help balance hormones and improve sleep quality, and there are even more reasons to get outside each and every day. So did you know that the elements in nature actually give off negative ions. Now, don't be fooled by the term negative. Um, if you don't remember from you know high school science classes, negative ions actually have very positive impacts on our health. They're said to purify the blood, promote cell rejuvenation, strengthen immunity, and balance the nervous system. And in modern life, we spend a vast majority of our time indoors. And even if you don't consider yourself an outdoorsy person, you can and really should experience the benefits of negative ions. And this can include going for a walk or a light hike, going to the park, or one of my personal favorites way to accomplish this is by visiting a botanical garden. Memberships are usually very reasonable, and the one that I have actually pays for itself after just two visits. This is a fantastic activity for dates, catching up with friends or loved ones, uh, even for visitors that may be in town, and many memberships are considered donations and can be written off during tax season, um, and even better... A lot of them have programs or events for kids, so it can be a really family-friendly um, activity. And it is my genuine belief that all humans can be creative. As an adult, I took up dance, cooking, raw dessert making, a little bit of fashion, indoor gardening, bread making, and next on my list is some sewing classes. And all of these activities require creativity. And honestly, there are just endless ways to bring uh, creativity out in yourself. And you could be like Lainey, the founder of Simple Sugars, whom we'll talk about here very shortly, and find a creative way to solve a problem like her eczema. You could start making your own skincare or home care products with essential oils. You can take on a movement practice like dance or contortion that allows for creativity. And it's really important to remember that you do not have to be great at something in order to enjoy it. And everything, and I mean everything we do in life, is absolutely a practice. When you think about you know, a gold medal winning athlete, they did not have those skills the first time they walked on the track or on slopes. And many singers took years of lessons um, or participated in choirs before they could carry a tune at 
all. So find something that calls to you, give it a try, and then practice. When you fall in love with the journey of learning something new, every step of the way is is truly beautiful and enjoyable. And every time you see progress, it really will be a cause for celebration. And creativity can improve our self-worth, happiness, which lowers stress. And as we've learned, lowering stress can lower inflammation and the symptoms that you may be experiencing. The last element in my healing approach is love. So take a moment and think about how love might relate to your eczema. Any guesses? The answer here is self-love. So in the initial consult with my clients, one of my questions is, do you love yourself? And you'd be shocked at what an impact that self-love truly has on our bodies and our health. If you're not sold quite yet here on this concept, one of the reasons why meditation is so effective is because our brain does not know the difference between actually experiencing something and just thinking about it. So if you're visualizing your happy place, which for me is the beach, you can reap some of the same benefits of actually being there. So additionally, our thoughts clinically impact our DNA and cell structure. So if you're constantly thinking unkind thoughts about yourself, it will absolutely impact your mental and your physical health. Let me repeat that because, again, it is just so important. If you are constantly or if you are ever thinking unkind thoughts about yourself, it will impact your physical and your mental health. So my challenge to you is to thank your body for eczema. You heard me correctly. I want you to thank your body for eczema because your body is trying to protect you. Again, this could be the whisper before the scream. Your body is communicating to you that something deeper is going on and it must be addressed. Our bodies will always tell us when something isn't right. And bioindividuality comes in where the symptoms show up. So for instance, again, depression, anxiety, acne, dermatitis, fatigue, brain fog, and many more symptoms could all be the result of dysbiosis, nutrient deficiencies, sleep disturbances, toxic exposures, and many, many other pathways. When we practice gratitude, again, thanking our body for our symptoms, we are more likely to heal because we are sending cell and DNA support to our bodies. I actually learned this method when I took a mindfulness-based stress reduction course. They use the example of getting a cold and thank you for letting your body Uh, for your body letting you know that it's time to rest and support the immune system. Now, I'll be honest, this method takes some practice. Again, everything that we do in life is a practice. You may have to force yourself in the beginning, but then it truly becomes a natural habit. It will become a part of who you are. Being positive, being kind, and loving yourself will become part of who you are if you truly practice it. And you'll experience less stress and far more confidence. For me, taking on this practice was truly a massive turning point in the quality of my skin and in every aspect of my life. And if you're starting to understand my methods, you know I found a study supporting this. So the study uh, is actually called Breathing to Younger Skin, Reversing the Molecular Mechanism of Skin Aging with Yoga. And it states that through expressing improved self-image, there is an overall improvement in the quality of life and mood of the individual. So again, thank your body for signaling that something is going on and practice self-love. Okay, y'all, let's finally talk about Simple Sugars Skincare. If you're not familiar with this company, 
it really has an amazing story. So Lainey Lazari, the founder, suffered from eczema starting at a very young age. And at 14, she started making her own sugar scrubs based off of research and using really high quality ingredients. So it worked so well that friends and family started requesting a batch. And it actually was helping a lot of friends with other health conditions like psoriasis. So from there, she turned it into a small business. Fast forward a few years, at the young age of 19, Lainey appeared on Shark Tank, where Mark Cuban invested in her company. Now, I've used these products myself, and I was so impressed that I reached out to Lainey to spread the word about uh, addressing dermatitis using non-allopathic methods. And purchasing her products give you clean ingredients that are effective, it supports a small business, and it supports a young woman-owned business. So on top of getting an amazing product, you're also really contributing to helping a small business. So please note that the products have not been clinically tested to cure, prevent, or treat any diseases. However, the testimonials truly speak for themselves, and they do offer international shipping. You'll just want to check out the FAQs for more details on that. And as an added bonus, the original versions without the um, added emu oil have no animal ingredients. So for anyone that's like me that leads a plant-based lifestyle, this is definitely an extra added bonus. And before revealing the code to you for your discount, I do want to take a moment to thank you all so much for joining me today. It truly has been a dream of mine to uh, present free educational material for those that are interested. And I, I wouldn't be able to do it if you weren't listening to this webinar. So again, thank you absolutely so much. And if you like the content today, I would be ever so grateful if you followed me on Instagram, where I provide daily inspiration, anecdotes, uh, tips on how to bring all eight elements that we talked about to life in different ways, and clinical data about health. If you're interested with working, uh, if you're interested in working with me as a client, you can go to the services portion of my website, and you can also sign up for the email list to get notifications about upcoming free webinars. Again, I have one scheduled for June on sports nutrition. And don't worry, there's no spamming. To be quite honest, I'm still learning how to use the email list. So you definitely won't get spammed. You'll just get some notifications about um, some really cool events. Now, y'all have been so patient, and it's time for your reward. So I have a very strict policy and standards on who I'm willing to partner with, and Simple Sugars just really hits the mark. I personally use the face, body, and foot scrub daily. My drier than dry skin has become supple and smooth. Uh, my fine lines and wrinkles have noticeably diminished, and my breakouts have absolutely improved dramatically. So I am so pleased to offer you a 15% off discount code to Simple Sugar Skincare. So in order to use it, you're going to want to go to simplesugarsskincare.com. You're going to fill your basket with all of your favorite goodies. And then at checkout, you're going to use the promo code that you see on the screen here in bold, which is M-Y-H-A-P, and that will help you receive that 15% off discount code. So thanks again so much for attending this webinar, and I truly look forward to seeing you on the next one.